Hey guys, I'm Riley. And I'm Audrey. And welcome to the Dramatic Effect Podcast, where we dive into all things film, books, Broadway, and beyond. One part book club, one part TV movie binge, and all parts drama. Tune in every Monday. Hello, you guys. Welcome back to Dramatic Effect Podcast. I'm Audrey. I'm Riley. And we are here today, Saturday morning. Saturday morning. I'm Riley's a little... not feeling so great. <laughs> guys, I'm getting old. I literally, <laughs> I guess, okay, I would love for people to let me know in the comments or somewhere, like, three martinis, is that something that makes you hungover, or am I really weak from that? I it... think that that is valid. Three is a decent amount of drinks. Yeah, and it's like, it's they're not like watered down. Like martinis are That's like true. potent. That drink. is very true. So I'm feeling it today, but mm-hmm. you know what? I, nothing would stop me from getting up, doing a little dramatic effect. And then going to Soul Cycle, apparently. Well, you know what? You gotta sweat it out, guys. You gotta like, you really, I'm gonna go to a, like a sauna after and just like sit and sweat okay, out my demons. Okay, I guess that's demon. true. But can someone let us know if that's true? Probably not. Like, it probably is pretty bad. F- oh, well, okay. Working out is probably good because I think it helps you metabolize the alcohol. Okay. Um, but is the sweating, does it actually not. get it out of your system is what I'd like to know. Yeah, like, do you actually sweat alcohol? Because, well, yeah, because also sweating is a way of your body detoxifying. Yeah, so true. So, probably. Probably. But I would really like to know if there's, yeah. like, signs behind Look that. Look at us being, like, true. goop <laughs> up in here being like, so how, this is how you detox. How about that? Have you seen that? Uh, yeah. She breaks her fast with bone broth. Like, I don't think that even breaks fast. Like, I don't I, think, yeah. I don't think it does. I like bone broth a lot, oh, to uh, be honest bone broth, with you. Bone broth is great, but Fantastic. not as, like, your lunch when you, like, are finishing an 18-hour fast. Someone said something funny that was, like, you've been doing goop. Oh, it was Heather McDonald. She was, like, you've been doing goop for 10 years if you're not detoxed by now, then you're like something's not working over oh there. God. Then something is not <laughs> something's right. Up, yeah, something's literally. Up. And then I saw another theory that's unrelated to um, like goop itself, but it's interesting that like they think that she's like doing press right now regarding goop as a distraction from this lawsuit she's in. <gasps> that um, she's being sued for running into a skier on the mountain. <gasps> in Deer Valley and he like got a concussion and broke three ribs oh no and it's interesting because I was just in Deer Valley but yeah um like apparently he's suing her for like three hundred thousand dollars because she ran into another skier because she ran into him and apparently oh and and is that day and you and left you have to stay so like that's like basically a hit and run like oh gee yeah like you have to stick around and like make sure they're okay yeah I don't really know I mean I actually don't know what happens if like, I know someone's in, there's a, per, like, a man that's in jail for running into a small kid and killing him. Like, <gasps> it's really bad to run into another skier on the mountain if and injuring them. Like, it's, yeah. so, I, the fact that she apparently was also with an instructor who, like, should have known better, but they just oh, left. Gee. And this man, like, had broken ribs. <gasps> So, I don't know. Oh, God. Yeah. See, the reason I'm asking that is I, I know those questions might seem a little stupid, but I've never skied yeah, before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So no, I don't no. know. You don't I know no the, the Because to me, etiquette. I'm like, well, I feel like I would just flail down the mountain and hit everybody in my path. Yeah, yeah. So, I didn't know if it was that <laughs> yeah. serious. You got to keep to yourself, yeah. not no, bumper I mean, cars. I would, I would try to keep to myself, <laughs> but there's no promises there. Oh, no. I've definitely I would run probably in. get sued. I've definitely run into a person or two and also have had a person or two run into me. But yeah, so someone said that they think that that might be a cover up. Like she's trying to just get press. In so a is she direction. just saying outrageous stuff? I don't know. Over there, because apparently now she also does ozone. Did you see that? No. It's like an ozone enema or something. Sorry, what? <laughs> well, she was saying something about her, like the, the IV she likes. And someone's mm-hmm. like, all right, there's a problem if you have a favorite IV. Ozone therapy what alternative medical treatment that introduces ozone or ozonides to the body which essentially just puts gas what up your ass what yes yep it goes up your up the butt yeah Mm -hmm. yeah no no no. so what the rectal ozone therapy Gastroenterologist condemns Gwyneth Tr- Paltrow's use of rectal ozone therapy. Doesn't that like? I feel like that can't be good for your 
rectum. It, it's the process of administering ozone gas into your body to treat a disease or wound. I don't know. Oh I my don't God. know. Uh, really concerning. Really concerning stuff. Uh, but yeah, so. I mean, this is the woman who told us to put like a, a jade stone up our vaginas. So. She did. She did do that. You know, so we have to take that all with a grain of Yeah. Grain of what, what happened to her? I don't know. That you, that's like they, they're saying it's like a wellness cult out there. Yeah, which I believe. Oh, a hundred percent. It totally is. A hundred percent. I mean, she also like hasn't done a lot of acting, like other than like Marvel, right? Like she's she won an Oscar. I, have you ever seen Shakespeare in Love? No, I've never seen it either. That I guess that's what she won her Oscar for. Oh, but like all she does these days is Marvel. I guess it's like she gets paid enough, so it's like whatever. But like she's really kind of like left acting as a craft. Yeah. Which is interesting. Very interesting. I don't, I feel like though, mm, I don't know. As I get older, like, even if I made enough money, I still love, I mean, I still love it enough now that I would keep doing yeah, it. But like, yeah. I don't know. Well, it's almost, it's ideal. Like, her situation is so ideal, actually, as an actress, because she, like, can afford to just take, like, parts she wants instead of parts she needs exactly exactly so like i feel like that's like everyone's dream is just to be able to like do it for fun almost and like she doesn't need to worry about like getting the big box office roles yet she chooses to just do like the big box office stuff so it's it's very interesting it is interesting i don't know i don't really understand it maybe one day i'll understand yeah maybe someday but i won't be i won't (laughs) hopefully won't be the head of a wellness cult right right that will not be a part of the future for you no no i don't think that's in i don't think that's in my future i was in a wellness cult uh back in my freshman year of high school what blogilates blogilates oh my god i'm totally kidding (laughs) uh no but i i was obsessed with blogilates my freshman year of high school it's like it's also like um what is it like Chloe Tang yes, and like yes, uh, yes. BBG very, like very similar toxic but it wellness was, well yeah I mean or fitness well cult, I guess, was whatever. it one of the triggers of my anorexia Ooh. potentially might have been yeah I'm just kidding it probably it was not no the, yeah the trigger of my anorexia was my all girls Catholic high school mm, that'll that's do what it was that'll do it <laughs> that'll get you <ya. laughs> every ya. time <laughs> every time Damn. I will never send my children to. Or my girls to an all-girls school. I would send my boys to an all-boys school. Did you know, have I shared this with you, that I got kicked out of Catholic school? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah so, pretty funny. Yeah, I didn't I didn't make it to the grade where we went all-girls. But, I mean, talk oh. about rejection is redirection. I yeah, would not fair. have survived high school at this place. Ooh. Like, I... Terrible. I feel like I was already having trouble as, like, a little eight-year-old, let alone, like, <laughs> getting into, like, actual high school mean girl ages mm-hmm. so no, public school was, was the, the worst. way to go for me yeah I was a you cheerleader know. too you were a cheerleader yeah but like it's Period. not like in the movies like it wasn't like cool to be a cheerleader <laughs> like it was just like same though yeah it, I, I don't is it cool to be a cheerleader nowadays I don't, at all i don't know it's well, cool so, sorry <laughs> i take that <laughs> No, like I, I feel like it's cool to do it as a sport, yeah. but to be like the cheerleader on, on the, the sidelines, side yeah. I feel like isn't as cool as it used to be like in like the 2000s. Yeah, the yeah, like the bring like, it on era. Exactly. <laughs> like that's bring what it I on. wanted to be. Bring it on and um, uh, One Tree Hill, exactly. like they were the cheerleaders. Oh, like that yeah. was super cool. Like I watched a lot of One Tree Hill, so I was like, mom gotta be a cheerleader. gotta be a cheerleader. gotta be a cheerleader <laughs> um but i did do all-star cheerleading for like a little bit as well oh wow um and that was much more of like an athletic activity it's um, quite the sport yeah it really is i was yeah. obsessed that was the cult that i was freaking in like really it, oh my god i would sit on twitter just like scrolling through they call we call them cheer liberties i don't know if this still exists like if we still i mean they definitely still exist yeah but i don't know if like it, it was like before the age of influencers right like it was like right when like blogging and stuff came up so like the idea yeah. of like being obsessed with someone on social media was so new um but i would sit and like watch hours and hours of videos from competitions of these teams that I was obsessed with that like I didn't know a single human being on yeah and I would watch their like 2001 world championship finals 
uh, routine and like have it memorized and make my parents listen to cheer remixes and like on <gasps> car rides, which like that is torture. Oh they, my god, like poor parents. I think also cheer remixes. I've seen some like recently on TikTok, and I think they've gotten a lot better. But they used to be like, ding boop. No, boop, I know pop, exactly pop. what you're <laughs> like, talking about. It, they are wild songs wild. these remixes Jeez. so yeah no thanks mom and dad for putting up with that yeah i would just blast wicked and the music man yeah uh luckily my my parents didn't mind that they enjoyed it yeah well that was another one was i loved to put on like the show of les mis like from the start mm. on a car ride and try to get through the whole show i mean that's honestly a good way to pass the time though oh 100 percent. that's what i do i'll put on the wicked album Allie and I will, we did one time had a four hour <laughs> drive from Philly to the Hamptons and we went through, Allie's my roommate for people listening that Audrey also knows. Yeah. Um, and we went through the show of Hamilton twice. Yep. Oh, Hamilton as well. So yeah. it's always, it's always Wicked, then Hamilton. Mm -hmm. Then if we want to add some Music Man in the mix, we'll turn that on. Okay. Then maybe we'll tap into Les Mis. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, like, like Les Mis is, is the top for me. Gotcha. But also, um, I weirdly got into Rent on a, a recent flight. I don't know what prompted me to put it on. Yeah. I, what did you... I really want to remember why. Nothing. Oh, you know what it was? So I've been... I, like, am now mutuals with, like, three different Aaron to date, um tiktok account like fan <laughs> accounts and i got really yeah no your like, mutuals with them oh no like i How had about a, his dkny ad oh my god <laughs> we have to go sit at this coffee place and just like wait for him to come in no yeah <laughs> i mean i don't know if he's ever gonna go there again no truly he has he, like he must have been willing either he's but lying or he had to be though, willing to give it up i wonder if there are other people that are as creepily obsessed with him as we are no, there's has to be people that are more think, that are worse. A hundred percent. There are people I feel like that go to like see him in the show weekly and really? I these on these fan accounts, the people in the comments are like pretty wild. Oh. Not <laughs> if you're a fan account that I So I'm not that speak weird. To, no, no, no. I promise you we're we're just on the cusp okay. of as I mean, people of form obsession. also like these like parasocial relationships, obviously, with celebrities. But I think Broadway stars are such an interesting example of like a new level because you watch them perform in person. So it creates, yeah. like, you make, make eye contact with this person while they're performing like Audrey did. Yeah. And like, I actually need to look at tickets. No, I a hundred percent. I mean, he, he's has, leaving. I think a couple more he weeks, has like, like another month. month. Let me know. I'll come. Yeah, with he you. has one, two, three more weeks. So okay, let's look at tickets. Uh, yeah, we'll figure that 100%. out. One hundred percent. Um, well, because also I want us to do Moulin Rouge on this show once we wrap oh, up. Oh, true. Daisy Jones, and you need to watch the movie too. It's, I know it's interesting. Have you ever seen? Like, did you see Elvis? No. Okay, so like, have you ever seen a Baz Luhrmann film? I don't know. They Maybe. like Romeo and Juliet with Leo. You probably haven't seen one then. I'm trying to think of like, oh, Gatsby, I guess would be. Yeah. One. Okay. So Gatsby, but that's like the least like Baz Luhrmann of Baz, as far as his movies go. They're very like vaudeville, quirky, like sensory overload. Like oh. a lot is going on at once. And it'll yeah. make sense how that the, this Broadway show was built out of that movie. Yeah. But seeing it on screen again, I watched the movie since seeing the show and I'm like, this is so chaotic compared to the way that they managed to do it on Broadway. But like, that was just, that's just Baz Luhrmann's style. Yeah. But like, I can understand how it's like not everyone's cup of tea. Like, for sure. It is, Nicole Kidman is unhinged as Satine. She oh, really? Crazy as Satine. So like, I mean, amazing. She yeah. does so well. But like, it, it's just a very interesting movie to I'll watch. Have so to you'll have to check I it have out. To check it out. Um. But should we? Speaking of Daisy Jones, should we get into it? Yeah, we shall. Um. So episode seven and episode eight were two di very different episodes. Very different. They, I mean, episode seven, we barely saw the band. No, we really were just in Greece the whole time. Yeah. Um, uh -huh. They made some changes to Niccolo. Yeah. I think there are some I like and some that I was kind of like, you're not quite getting like the essence of what his character was supposed to be. Yeah. Like, I think, first of all, he's like, this actor's really handsome. Yeah, he's super handsome, and he's like 
well put together. He was much more put together than I imagined. Like I kind of was like, yeah. expecting him to be like a little sleazier. Me too. Um, and he was not at all. He no, really he was charming together, actually. Prince. Yeah. And he like was really supportive. He's like, let's go back. Like, let's get you on tour. Like, I just feel like there weren't enough red flags. I agree. Screaming eh. from the beginning, at least. But the fact that, no, the best was when uh, Simone is like, oh, you know, uh, what she's talking to Daisy about um, Billy. And she's like, I forget what she was saying, but she was saying something like, you have to go back like you like yeah you can't do this without that i don't or what was, i don't know what she was saying but daisy said something like you're in it's love been with so no 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 oh. no no oh. she's like it's been so long like i'm i i billy makes me sad and uh nikki makes me happy and like i've been i can't deal with it anymore and she was like, it's been so long. And Simone goes, it's been a month. <laughs> and it's literally. literally been a month that literally. she's been away from them. So true. And, uh, yeah, that was just funny. So then that also gives you perspective into how long they decided to get married. Yeah. no, Or, like, how long it took them to decide to get married. Yeah. I guess, what, was probably two or three weeks? No, totally. Yeah. So true. Wow. So that's a big red flag. Yeah. And also, I guess, like... The red flags were just different, right? Like, he, yeah. him being like, I think Simone's in love with you. Like, what a weird thing to so say. So weird. And then she goes and says it to her. Yeah. It's like, what? you Just because I like women, now you're assuming I'm in love with you? Yeah. No, it's And so I was just, up. that was, yeah, that was kind of, yeah, fucked up. Well, also, I guess Daisy just doesn't know love that's not romantic like she's never had like familial love she's simone's her, her only close friend she's ever had mm -hmm. so i guess it's like in that sense it would also make sense that like she's like you care too much that's weird you must be in love with me yeah so like i thought that was interesting but my heart broke for simone in this episode. i know like she so really sad. yeah she got the short end of the stick yeah because she also just did so much for Daisy and especially when she shows up and she's like I fail money and yeah. she's like what it's like oh, girl like she was such a fantastic friend to you mm -hmm. and all you did was just kind of push her aside and then tell her that oh you must be in love with me it's like way to belittle the yeah. shit out of her no a hundred percent and I loved when Simone said, wait, I wrote it down. I wrote down a couple of the quotes during that fight, too, because they were so, like, Simone was hitting the nail right on the head. And I will say, too, like, this is the Daisy that I feel like we've been missing from, like, the early episodes of the show. That is, like, the selfish, really entitled, never has had to work a day in her life. Mm -hmm. And one of the things she said, well, first of all, she's called her a selfish bitch. Yeah, saw her, <laughs> I said when Simone calls her a selfish bitch, thank God someone had to say it. Literally, literally. True. And then also, um, uh, where is, oh, I mean, she just says, like, some of us have to work our damn asses off to get half the breaks that you've gotten yeah and it's so true like you see now in that beginning of that episode which i liked we saw a little bit more of simone working for her career because we didn't mm -hmm. get that in the book that was like a no. nice little story that we got yeah um and you see her working really hard and it's like daisy didn't have to work remotely as hard to get this opportunity to be on an album and yeah. now she has like the number i think it was like the number three and the number nine record in the country yeah so literally they're clearly blowing up mm -hmm. i thought it was also interesting uh that well first of all he did, she didn't even tell nikki that she was in a, a band in a band or a singer she said she was a poet <laughs> which like poet. i guess like songwriters are poets true <laughs> not a lie but true it's, but really funny he's just like oh i i knew she sang yeah and then she knew she had a good voice and then he like, finds the what? the rolling stone article and he's like oh you're like famous and then she's playing on the radio when they're driving back. I was like, oh, my God. And then at that point, when he hears on the radio, when they're driving back, it almost seemed like then he might have lost a little bit of, like, his power over her because he was kind of just like, oh, shit. Yeah. Like, 
you're a lot bigger than I thought you were, and I'm not this overarching power over you anymore. Yeah. Because you're ginormous. Yeah, and it's like doesn't matter that he's a prince. It doesn't matter at all. At all. Because yeah. and then especially when uh I guess jumping to episode eight, when they're like, Oh, and they're interrogating him in the van. They're like, Oh, you're a prince? Like, do you go to school? Like, do you have a job? And he's like, No, I'm a student of life. And yeah. they're like, Oh, okay. right. <laughs> like, of course. And they're just like making fun of him, which I was like, that's great. And then so finally good. when Billy punches him and Warren's like, I was waiting for somebody to punch that uh, that royal prick this whole yes, time. Yes. I was like, that was fantastic. Love that. His character wasn't as unlikable as they portrayed him in the book until a certain point yes. in episode eight, I would say. Yes. Especially, but, you know, I started to dislike him when he said that Simone was in love with Daisy, then kept going as he, uh, I actually, I don't know, I, I didn't like him there, and then really didn't like him with the drugs and stuff. Yeah, once you see him start being enabling with the drugs, then you're like, ew. Yeah. Like, when she wakes him, she's like, I'm good, and he's like, no, 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 and like forces the tray of drugs to her, mm-hmm. and then she's like all messed up on stage. It's like so upsetting to watch. And that he's was just hard. watching. Yeah, that was hard to watch, like yeah. her get progressively more and more um messed up and maybe i'm thinking maybe they didn't show the drugs as much till now to show how bad it got Mm -hmm. um and maybe how she was like a functioning addict before but now she's becoming like a dysfunctional addict that's such a good point she i love like the distinction between functional addict and like a spiraling addict Uh because that really is I mean even in the book that's what she was like she had her you know pockets filled with pills but like like we said it was like you know sipping a can of coke like it wasn't like you know this dramatic thing Mm -hmm. and now it's like you can really starkly see um the difference in like how bad it is getting I really liked the change um with the shower scene where, you know, Nikki puts her in the shower. I really liked that Billy came in. Yeah. I thought that was a, I mean, obviously a really sad moment, but like, I mean, I felt that in all the feels. Yeah. I, oh my God. I, after finishing that episode, I was like about to cry. No, and me too. I was like, I feel, I feel really upset right now. I feel really upset right now. And it's, but, oh, it's just tough. Like this whole thing. And he's just like bawling his eyes out. Yeah. And then also, I want to touch on while we're talking about this, the moment in episode eight when um, they are fighting and he says, I know what it looks like when you're in love with someone and then almost kisses her. That was crazy. What the fuck? That was wild. Wild. My jaw was on the floor. I like the almost kissing. I was just like, he's like, I know what it looks like when you're almost in love with someone. And then she hits him because she's like, what the yeah, fuck? which I loved. Yeah, I, thank it God. Goes, it goes back to what we were saying. Like we've said this before, like the addressing of it. Like they're really talking about the fact that they're in love and they're yeah. twin flames. And it's like hard for them. Like it's so crazy to watch. Like, oh, and how, how about when she's talking to Nikki about soulmates? Yes. Yes. And yes. she's like, maybe it's not a soulmate. Maybe I'm, maybe you're just looking in a mirror. She's like, maybe he was my mirror. Yeah. It's like, no, that's yeah. not what it was. Yeah. No. <laughs> Uh, but yeah how about that when she hits him and he says that I it's just tough and then after that Camilla shows up yeah she all of a sudden shows up she's decked out oh girl her outfit getting off the plane I was like I also just slay slay but like was that very her okay this is the thing she wasn't like I feel like maybe I guess in the book we didn't get more we didn't get that I guess physical description yeah of her as much but like she is a like very like she looks like the wife of a rock star in this i guess right so, now like yeah. she's all decked out i guess so yeah so maybe that's like why she's they're putting her more into that role i think also probably they just feel like she's a good character to like play with a different type of fashion of the time maybe for sure because i think it would be really tough if they made camilla like homelier like i think that would have been you know a disservice to her character i agree um but how about her interaction with eddie out on the balcony oh 
that was that was crazy. Um, wait, but before we hit oh, that, yeah, yeah, sorry, you're um, well, she shows up decked out and then gets in the car and they're madly in love again. Yeah, like all over each other, all over each other. It's really and weird. I, it was weird because Billy earlier had called her in the middle of the night to talk to Julia, mm-hmm. but like didn't really try to talk to Camilla at all. Mm-hmm. Was just trying to talk to the daughter, which mm-hmm. is like cute and sweet, whatever. But it's like, oh, your wife's on the phone. You don't want to chat with her. Yeah. And yeah. then, but when she shows up, you guys are all over each other, in love with each other, making out, having sex. Maybe it's just a, oh, I haven't had sex in a while. Want to have sex with this person that is my husband or wife. Uh, but then there's that passion with Daisy. And then yeah. following up, the conversation with Eddie on the balcony. I know. It's so true, though. Like, I th- the math just isn't always mathing with it's, them. It's not. Because, you know, I like the moments where they seem like a happy couple, but like, no, I don't know. Like, I just don't know where it's coming from because other times it's not quite there. Like, yeah, Billy's staying. Like, I felt really bad for Billy, like all of episode eight. Like he's, you know, they're having a lot of fun. Yeah, I mean, that's I, I said, <laughs> especially. And then when she shows up and goes to the party mm-hmm. and like kind of makes him go to the party. Yeah. I felt really, really bad for him. I thought that was weird that she made him go to the party. Yeah. I feel like the Camilla in the book would just not have gone to a Like, they would have just stayed in together. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I don't know. Like, she was like, I would love a drink. Yeah. In right. Of, right in front of him. And he's kind of like, mm-hmm. Yeah. Great. I don't. That doesn't feel like the supportive rock that she is in the book. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it does feel like more independent badass bitch yes doing whatever the fuck she wants exactly exactly so it's tough it is Two tough different things it's like I'm, I'm liking uh camilla maroney's take on her character it's just yeah different. It's, it's different i mean i really like camilla marone yeah she's so beautiful when i watch her on screen i'm just like Ugh. she's mesmerizing she's mesmerizing it's she has such an interesting voice too like not what i was mm-hmm. expecting from it, her and Gigi Hadid have the most unexpected voices ever. Yeah. You heard Gigi Hadid talk? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, like she has like a deep voice. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, I love that. Like, I love it. Slay. So cool. Um, But. Eddie and Camilla on the balcony. Yeah. We need to chat more about that. Indeed. I felt really bad for Eddie. I felt horrible <laughs> for him. She's like, what did she say to him? She said something along the lines of like, I don't regret it. Yes, she's, I don't regret it, but it's never going to happen exactly. again. And he's just like, Him and he's just begging to talk about it. She's like, I don't think there's anything to talk about. And he's just like, what do you mean? Like, well, what's sad about that? I think that? that's really unfair to him. It's it's so unfair to him because he's coming to her in that moment, like clearly has been waiting to talk to her, like has probably been thinking about it for months. Mm-hmm. And he almost thinks like like he's a little bit like so what now like what does this mean kind of thing and she's like nothing and that like is and probably it's just so clear that she just used him yeah to make herself feel better yep used and at like billy messes up camilla's upset and then you know eddie gets used and eddie just gets used by like everyone Everybody. in the situation and he just doesn't poor win. eddie poor eddie yeah i I get you, Eddie. Yeah. I understand. I don't blame you for leaving. Eddie, you deserve better. (laughs) He does deserve better. I feel bad. Yeah. Uh, Another great scene. Karen Karen and Eddie. Eddie. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, my God. Literally, when they start making out on that tour bus. That's also, how about them making fun of Graham and they're just, like, trying to say that he, like, is gay? Yes. What? It just, is. it comes from left field. It comes from nowhere. Yeah. And she is, and Karen's like, uh, he's not gay. He actually is the most perfect dick I've ever (laughs) seen. I was like. (laughs) No, it was. Go off literally like stand up for your man yes, it's so cute and i just oh, i love him i love his character and i don't know maybe i'm just in love with that actor no he is Do you know he's really like, really like he's up and coming like he hasn't been in much really this is one of his first things he's killing it he's he fucking amazing is making me love his character so much i think so much he is doing a fantastic job yeah love, love him, him. Ugh, love him and Suki, i'm your biggest fan suki is doing 
such a she good job. She is amazing. She is like looking at the sun to me. Like I, she again has that like star power that Camilla has as well. Like yeah. she is just so beautiful. We know she's so talented. Her acting chops, I think have gotten even better since like her earlier younger days. Oh yeah. And I always forget that she was in um, Love Rosie with Sam Claflin. Which is with was them. she? Yes, she, she's the one that he marries. Like Sam Claflin has talked about it on press. Like I've known Suki since she was twenty four years old. Like we go so far back. I'm so protective over her. Wait a minute, she is totally different, right? From that I never would. I would never have put together that this was her. Uh, wow, what a different role for her. Yeah, very different. I mean, also this movie was a long time ago. Yeah, it was wow. almost yeah almost ten years ago. And now, like, Crazy. you know, they're in their 30s. Ugh, Love, Rosie is a great movie. That is a good movie. I haven't watched that in a while. How old is Sam Claflin? Oh, so he's 36. Do you think that's kind of crazy that because um, Camilla Marone is 25. Mm -hmm. So they have an 11 she year is, age gap. She's so young. So young. Which is crazy. And it makes me feel really unaccomplished, to be honest. <laughs> no, no, you can't I'm compare. Like, Stop it. I'm older than I'm older than twenty five. So we can't you no. still have years to, you but know, like, get there, girl. I guess I'm looking at it in the respect of like that's what I want to do. Right. And so right. I'm like, fuck. No, but like I'm not gonna be there in two years. You could be. No, you they fucking know. film it. Well, when did they film this? Last year? last uh yeah right after covid I think so 2021 yeah like 2021 yeah it's like two years yeah but you could book something in the next year and then you never know we're putting that in Fingers the universe crossed. like you could book something tomorrow i'm you gonna know, book just, something yeah you're booking something okay in 2023 period so, period <laughs> someone commented and they were like you are meant to be they commented and said i'm convinced oh no sorry you look like you were just meant to be an early 2000s protagonist. I said, tell that to the casting directors. I love that but so like, much. Yeah, and everybody keeps saying, like, oh, my God, you remind me of Kate Hudson. And I'm like, you guys, like. Girl, you're going to get there. Let's get me cast. Yeah. No, 100%. Whatever. You're. But back to Karen and Graham. Yes. They have the hottest makeouts in this whole show. So good. Like, I just love how they, at first, don't even believe Karen. They're like nice no, try and she's like oh you want me to prove it to you and goes up and starts making out with him and then they go in the back room because i was like you can't just get up and make out with him like you guys need to go have sex yeah, like yeah. to prove this go. like you can't just get up make out and like be like ha 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 yeah yeah, yeah. you exactly. gotta go that proves nothing if you all the way it out you gotta exactly go the i agree i agree and it was fantastic fantastic i can't believe though that the band like didn't know until then well remember in the book uh, I think it was Warren really thought that Karen was banging like a roadie named Bones or something. Yeah, like I think they probably knew something was up, but like just not, not like, with couldn't, each other. Couldn't have imagined that it would be between the two of them. But maybe yeah. they they definitely didn't think that like Graham was very sexually active. It is kind of funny. Like I guess like these girls are throwing themselves at him and they're watching him like be like no. So yeah. I can understand why they were like, dude, what what's up? going on? <laughs> exactly. Yeah, because it's like even to just I can understand. And, you know, not wanting to, like, have sex with a million people. But yeah. it's like, what? You're not going to entertain them and flirt with them and, like, kiss them? Yeah, like, let the girl sit on your lap. Whatever, yeah. You know? So, so it's funny. Uh, we haven't really talked about the performances of the tour. Oh, and, yeah. You know, how they showed that. I thought Riley Keough had a couple of, like, really magical moments mm -hmm. on that stage and a couple of really cringe moments like which ones there was a moment where she was jumping around and flailing her arms it didn't look like free-spirited dancing to me it looked like a toddler who like didn't know like have rhythm yet totally and, like it wasn't even i agree the with you on that um but then i was thinking to myself i was like how can you really make this look that free-spirited yeah i think that it, I, I think that's a little tough i think she okay the way that I would have done this as an actress <laughs> is I would have like slowed it down more almost. And like if she's mm -hmm. tripping, it's more like this rather yeah. than like this. 
for sure, for sure. But the YouTube version gets that fun visual of the and thing. Yeah, no, no, no. I got <laughs> you. I, I understand. So I thought that that, but then she did have some of those ethereal moments that were, I think, you know, very Stevie Nicks. Her fashion mm. was amazing on stage, I thought. Yep. <clears throat> and then I love that song, River. Love that yes, song. Such so a good, good song. It, it just hits every time. Mm-hmm. So I love that that's the song that they're like, you know, showing over and over again. Yes. And there's the one moment where she just starts screaming into Billy's mic. Mm-hmm. And I got chills. Yeah. That was really, a really good. good. One. And I feel like that was very reminiscent of like some of those Fleetwood Mac moments where they're screaming at each other on stage. Definitely. And then how about when she falls? And that was like, that was, as you said earlier, it was tough to watch. Um, as well as like, then, you know, Billy takes her off stage and then. I think it's like she gets the second wind and yeah. she's like, listen to them. Like, they they're out there me. for me. They love me. And she goes out there and then she sings, uh, was it Regret Me? Uh, what did she sing? Look at us now. Look at us now. Yeah. I got chills even just you like repainting that picture. It, yeah. That was such a good moment. And he just like throws off his guitar and runs off stage. Runs and off I'm stage. Like, Stop being so dramatic. Literally. And she does it. He also, by him saying, like, by him doing that, he is just, like... Digging the knife deeper and deeper. Yes, he's just proving the fact that that song has more meaning Mm -hmm. than he's letting on. Exactly, exactly. And the fact, I thought it was really interesting that the band didn't start playing along with her when she was singing it. Yeah. And I didn't think about it at first, and I rewatched that part, and it occurred to me, like... They, you know, their loyalty is to Billy at the end of the day. Yeah. So they didn't they didn't jump in. And I think it still was like a magical moment, her singing yeah. to that song, a cappella. Mm-hmm. And I thought it was cool. I thought it was a cool change from the book because in the book, th- she's like, hey, you want to hear Honeycomb? And then makes him sing the song with her. So I thought that was like a cool moment as well. But I kind of just liked this like really big fuck you from her where she's just like, I'm singing this fucking mm-hmm. song, whether you 100%. like it or not. percent. So and then they're doing all that press, though. And like there's all this speculation that, you know, they hate each other because he obviously spoke so poorly about her. Spoke and so poorly Rolling, about her. Uh, Stone's article. But in the book, I feel like it was a little more dubious of like whether they hated each other or they were hooking up or what was going on between them. Whereas definitely like, if Billy's pulling her off stage and then walking off stage in front of millions of people or thousands of people, <laughs> you know, at these concerts, it, like there's just too much confirmation that like they definitely just hate each other publicly. Yeah, totally. You know? I agree, and I wonder how that makes Camilla feel. Yeah, I wonder if she's like, "This is awesome," or if she's like, "Fuck, there's more going on." Hate and love are two sides of the same coin. They are so close together, you know. So it's like I think for Camilla, a win would be if he didn't care at all about Daisy and would just sing the song and it meant totally nothing. Totally agree. It's you know I think it's probably harder to watch. Definitely, your husband have such strong feelings. Yeah, hate those towards visceral someone. reactions. It's all so visceral. Oh, and now my head is just like back at the like the end frame of yeah him i know holding her I in know. the shower but then why why do they have to like ruin this like amazing acting moment and like i feel like we both like agree that we felt very emotional during that scene with like a cheesy line like it's you i kind of liked it really <laughs> oh <laughs> So fair. I, so fair. Okay. We actually, uh, we've been talking about this a lot lately. Like my friends and I, uh, at least like on the brand trips that we've been on and stuff, um, we're chatting about like love and who, you know, wants a boyfriend, who want, who, you know, whatever. And I am always the one that's, I'm like, I love love. Right. Like I a love, sucker for love. love. I am a sucker for love. And I did like that line. It kind of made my heart melt. Aww. But it's also tough because I also am like the biggest anti-cheating person ever. Yeah. So um, that's also tough. You're having a moral I'm just, dilemma. I'm, oh my God, it's the biggest moral dilemma of like yeah. my entire life. Yeah. Because I don't, I don't want. To, it's like the poll you put on our story saying, do you love to hate them or you hate to love them? And I was exactly. like, I hate to love them because it's tough. Like, I, 
it's tough when you're watching two people that it's realistically, I think that they are more aligned with each other than Billy and Camilla. I think what makes it even crazier in the show and I like kudos to the show for doing this. I think it's so infuriating that Camilla has someone she could go be with and Billy and Daisy could be together and everyone would be happy. Everyone I just, would be happy, except maybe not Camilla. Except maybe not Camilla. But like, I just wish that she loved Eddie as much as Eddie loved her and then that could work. And it, which I, I think don't know. realistically, if she just accepted the fact that Billy was in love with Daisy and yeah. left him yeah. and then tried things out with Eddie, she probably would be like, oh, this is actually the person that I'm meant to be with. And I think it would all have been a happily ever after, but obviously mm -hmm. that's not how... No. That's not how life works, but that's definitely not how a book or a TV Entertainment show works. goes. No, <laughs> definitely, definitely not. not. Definitely not. Mom. But like, oh, oh, yeah, I just thought of another... Oh, yep, I just... You know, we already talked about this, but the, like, I know what it looks like when you're in love. Like, that was like... I was like, holy shit. Like, I, I just really feel like there's also stuff... You know, I, I know we're not getting that unreliable narrator aspect in this, mm -hmm. but part of me is like people on our TikTok have gotten into really interesting discourse about this. Like people really think that they were hooking up the entire book and just didn't tell Julia that because <gasps> she's the one interviewing. Yeah, <gasps> I know. Isn't that wild to think about? And there's no like evidence for either way. Right. Like we we have no truth to Billy or uh daisy story i don't story. think i don't think that they maybe in the book but i don't know I don't about know. not in the show yeah i think in the show we're seeing things as they happened i agree so but it's just so crazy to me like to think that the entire book could be a lie the whole thing could be a lie so maybe well maybe that's why we're seeing a lot more yeah of the like the kiss actually happening him saying that and almost kissing her uh -huh. Maybe that's why, because actually in the book, that is kind of what was going on. And you know what they do in the show that's really interesting? When they pan to Billy or Daisy, I'm now understanding why we're getting a lot of those smiles or those silent moments. It's because they're holding back. Like, they're not <gasps> saying it in the interviews. Yeah. So, really interesting, right? Really interesting. And it's such a cool... Because well, they're clearly not going to... I mean, Camilla's being interviewed. So yeah. they're not going to fucking be like, yeah, we had sex. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Of course not. Exactly. And to Camilla's daughter, like, a mad, like that would be horrific if they told her that. So, like, yeah. It, but, like, really do we think she's the narrator in the show? She has to be. I really will be. That'll be, like, one of, like, my biggest issues with the show is yeah. if they change that. And if they change... I'm I'm still really holding out for that that letter at the end. If if Camilla's the letter has to be there, yeah. If Camilla's character does end up passing away, like I I'm hoping that we finish on that note because I do think that like overall like overall the sort of lesson of the story is like maybe you can love two people and you know one person might be right for you know one time in your life and you know. You yeah, can have another great love at a second time. I think you can love two people, but I don't know if you can be in love, in with, love two with two people. people. I think he was in love with Camilla in the beginning, fell out of love with her because of his addiction and everything going on, meeting Daisy, having such a strong connection with Daisy, falling in love with Daisy. Mm -hmm. And then I think that currently he's in love with Daisy, loves Camilla, obviously. Yeah. But he's not in love with her necessarily. Yeah. Which is tough. It's it's a dilemma. To Quite the, the dilemma. And I guess we'll. I see. can't imagine being in his shoes. No, that would suck. Billy's having a tough time. <laughs> he is having a tough time. He's I definitely... I don't blame. How about when he was throwing the beer bottles oh and Graham's God. coming over? He's like, "How many of those have you had?" It's like, wouldn't you have been a lot more concerned if he was fucking ha drinking beer? Yeah. I feel like I would have been. I would have like, ran dude, over fran hell? frantically, being like, "Oh my God." Oh my god are you okay like what happened like yeah. why are you doing this and he was just like how many of those have you had he's like i'm just throwing them yeah like, which also so sad girl emo boy moment like let me just throw these beers <laughs> but i kind of liked it um what prompted that again what was it why was he throwing them oh was it after the show i think it was just like after one of the shows i mean i think we just like i think it's to show that he just was so fucking bored like, he really had... And then Graham leaves him to go stay on the other bus with Karen. So, like, 
I can see it's it goes back to the conversations we had w- back when we were um do like analyzing the book more but we were like can you still be rock and roll without you know drugs and stuff and I can understand like yes you can still like he clearly had actually no problem making the doing the music making for sure without the drugs and alcohol but maybe that's because he was on a different drug which is love yeah <laughs> the drug of love <laughs> um but you know the tour aspect like that's a real challenge yeah i mean i performing every single night and you're traveling every day or yeah. you know every few days as well as like n- probably not sleeping that well or that much. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I would maybe need some stimulants. Mm-hmm. I would maybe need some. Yeah. And the fact that he doesn't have anything, he is dead, stone cold, sober. Like going on jogs in the middle of the night. <laughs> I'm like, geez, that hey, is woof. rough. Yeah. 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 Can't even have a beer after a show. No. Um. Yeah. So I don't know. We'll see how that plays out. I wonder if they like have him relapse or anything at any point the tour is not over yet i think the last he doesn't relapse in the book though no so we just never know with this show i guess though true but i feel like that's not something they would change no i hope not for what like right like why yeah they do that what would be like give him give him a little quick relapse yeah it's like because realistically (laughs) in real life if he did have relapse he probably would have to go back to rehab yes yeah that would be great something i've really been wondering is are they gonna kill teddy in the book because he's not like a guy this like british guy that doesn't take care of himself mm-hmm. in the show like he he looks pretty like he's doing pretty well health wise yeah and but i mean a heart attack is like a heart attack a heart attack is a heart attack you don't see it you coming never it's a silent know. killer i think i think they're totally gonna kill him but he does like an interview oh remember later. Them? you're so right he does do an interview like when later. is that interview 20 years later is it 20 years? No, but they don't have a 20 years Wait, later you're from so him. right. Oh, you're so right. Then they to- he totally passes away. Yeah. It probably was I probably can't. like, oh, wait, but shit. But is he talking about them in the past tense? I don't know. I want to go back and watch. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look question. into that one. I don't know. Really an interesting thought. Um, because I do think, like, I wonder if we'll get that moment where Daisy comes to Billy and is like, help me get sober. And, you know, they're this close to getting her sober, like, or getting her into rehab. And then they get the call that Teddy died and she, you know, gets even worse. Mm-hmm. And um, what's his name? Billy even, like, has a moment of, like, you know, weakness. And but, but uh, that scene I love because first Daisy sees Billy as, like, the person that can save her, comes to him for help. Mm-hmm. And I also love when he, like, throws the mini bar bottles out the window. Like, yeah. I thought that was, like, a cute moment uh-huh cute yeah. <laughs> i don't know why that's the word Super i use cute. so cute love that uh, but yeah so i don't know we'll see there's a lot i think it, it's getting much better as it goes on i am thoroughly enjoying it and yeah. i'm really upset that it's gonna be over i'm gonna be really upset when it's over yeah so it's 12 right 10 and we Fuck! have two more episodes next week's our last recap of daisy jones no yeah I know. Fuck, that sucks. I know. I yeah, I, I thought twelve because I keep saying it should have been twelve. Yes, exactly. That's what we were saying. So we could have like yeah. judged this. I was talking to I was talking to my best friend about it last night because she's been watching and she's like, my um, my life is gonna be over when it's over, and because she read the book like loves it, and um, she I we were talking about the interviews and I was saying the interviews are god awful. She was like, I actually like the interviews. I was like, really. And she said, and I was saying, you know, like I said on the last episode, how I wished that they were filmed on an older camera that gave more 90s PBS rock Mm -hmm. documentary interview style and gave that vibe. Yeah. But she was like, no, I actually kind of like it. I think it's more like there's this juxtaposition of the clarity that they have 20 years later. And these interviews are very clear, very, yeah. I, was I like, love that take. Three point Gab. So thanks to Gab for making that point. Yeah. Um, Gab gets oh, an yeah. A. Gab gets an A on uh, cinematography analyzing <laughs> analysis. Uh, analysis. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that was uh, that was a good point. It was something that you know something to think about. Yeah. No, there. It's like, and that's the cool thing about this show. Like you can say one thing, and I can easily be you know convinced otherwise totally you know so that's 100 percent. it's fun to break down so yeah. two more episodes to go we'll see you guys next week to 
talk about the end of the show. Perfect. Also, let us know if you guys would be interested in a Fleetwood Mac episode where we really go into the band more because I know we had talked about doing that. Yeah. Um, and I feel as though people, I mean, I can't scroll on my for you page without seeing Silver Springs now. Yeah. Which like I'm <laughs> loving that moment for Fleetwood Mac, but I'm also like, you know, I love that song so much. And I wonder how Stevie Nicks feels right now. That's she's also on say. TikTok. That's what I was going to say. I really wonder what Stevie Nicks is thinking right now. Yeah. But all these really cool old concert videos of her are like coming out. And I'm like, oh, she is just so cool. The bomb. So, 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 cool. so cool. So let us know. Um, all right. Bye, guys. <laughs> See you later. <laughs> See you next week. Hey guys, thank you so much for listening to Dramatic Effect. You can find us on Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube at Dramatic Effect Podcast. And don't forget to leave a rating and review. Love you guys. Bye.